you know, looking back at the at the LSU, excuse me, at the Arkansas uh, game, there's some really good parts. Uh, I thought that Bruce and Dom, that was encouraging. Both those guys the same night to, to play and get that production, like 27 points and around 12 or 13 rebounds. Uh, you know, the ball moved really well, kind of withstood a, a late run. And so yesterday we were uh, did a pocket of contact for about 10 or 12 minutes, went light for about probably an hour and 15 minutes, and then go today to face a real talented Alabama team. Really good guards, best rebounder in our league, uh, active front court that, you know, really Kentucky beat Kentucky and go like one for 11 from the line. Uh, in the second half, we had a great opportunity to win at Tennessee. I was going to ask you about that uh, Alabama and Tennessee the other day. What, when you looked at the film, what did Alabama do to stay in that game against a Tennessee team that a lot of people think is the national title contender? And, and Tennessee is, and it just shows you how good Alabama play. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, Tennessee kind of hit them early. And a lot of the teams, Tennessee is just kind of piled drive through. And Alabama just withstood a great run. Petty was unbelievable, had 30. Uh, I think he made five or six threes. Their team really guarded a high level. They matched Tennessee's physicality. Uh, and like I said, if it wasn't for the free throw line, Alabama should have won the game. Kermit, you've talked a lot about building a team to win on the road. What, I guess, what are the most necessary components uh, when you're in the other team's gym to, to finish a game like that? Yeah, well, you know, talent's always the forefront, but, you know, the toughness part of it, to be able to go through pockets of adversity, You've got to be able to rebound the ball on the road. You've got to be able to guard on the road. And the biggest thing I've seen in this league is the points off turnovers at home, but especially if you're going to try to be successful on the road. You start having live ball turnovers in front of other people's fan base and they get cheap buckets, energy in the building. So taking care of the ball is a maximum premium. Are those things different uh, than at the mid-major level? Mm -mm, it's all the yeah. same. It's all the same. It really is. It's just all the same. now. You know, when we were at Middle Tennessee for the last five or six, seven years, for the majority of the time, we had about the best players in the gym. You know, and now, you know, obviously, you know, the talent level is, is so good everywhere in this league. So many good players. And the fan bases are good, you know. So uh, the home court advantage, although, you know, we're talking about it yesterday, you know, teams have won on the road in our league, you know, and I think it's the balance. You mentioned Dom and Bruce. Gafford wasn't much of a factor on Saturday. Now that you looked at the tape, what did you see defensively from there that was better than, I guess, in, in some other games? Well, the, the biggest thing is we just limited him to six shots. You know, so that was the best thing. He didn't, he didn't get many attempts, didn't have any offensive rebounds. I just thought we were real active in our double teams. Our perimeter, we can get so much better. Because not only do you double team the post, the perimeter has – really good responsibilities and we had some breakdowns there that we tried to clean up yesterday. I think it was just our activity level and the biggest thing was you don't let him get any cheap baskets in transition and keep him off the offensive boards. Do you think that game was Bruce and Dom turning a corner towards what you want from them or was that more of a matchup that they just played well? Yeah, no, I just, I just hope, you just hope they just keep playing like that, you know, and uh, uh, like I said, I thought both of them were different but they both affected the game in such a big way and to get that kind of production. And so, you know, they've all, they both had really good moments, but that was their most complete game. And uh, so we'll sure need it uh, on Tuesday because Hall and that front line's very long, very athletic. How much was Devontae able to give you yesterday? What do you expect from him today and tomorrow? Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't practice yesterday. He was just on the bike. You know, there, there's so many, um, there's a wide variety when you start talking about stress reactions and stress fractures. I mean, there's the slightest and there's the most severe. There's some places on the foot where you can play. There's some that you can't, you know. So he's got it on a place on his foot that is, is the best for him to play. And uh, he said he felt better on Saturday, you know, and he said he's getting better. And so you know, I, I think that he's, you know, he, he understands what he has to do. He's been very mature in his rehab. Today he'll come and practice, you know, and then uh, – and we expect him to play tomorrow night. If he continues to have, I don't know, 10 minutes a game less or whatever it was on Saturday, what do you, what do, you do to make sure TD and Brian kind of don't overextend themselves, try to do too much? Yeah, you know, I think DC is, is a big factor. KJ Buffin playing the three, you know, is a factor. Uh, you know, I, I just think this, at the end of the day, I mean, these guys are young and in the best possible shape of their life, you know, so 
these NBA guys will play 115 games, you know. And so, you know, for these guys to play 30, 32 minutes a couple times a week, you know, with all the different things they're doing with their body and taking care of their body and all the things, I, I, I don't know. I, I think those guys will be just fine. You know, the only thing is you just knock on wood, you just try to stay away from nicks and bruises. Now that you've gotten to review the tape from Saturday, how do you think D.C. did in his biggest exposure yet? Yeah, he did great. He guarded at a high level. He made some unbelievable 50-50 ball plays, dove on the floor. He finished a couple high-level plays. And, you know, we have a plus-minus system, and he had plus 21. He led our team. You know, even though TD had great numbers, but he was on the floor. He led us in plus-minus, which that shows he's doing all the little things. The second tier of your bench, Kermit, uh, Hallam, and anywhere. Do we see anybody getting ready to turn a corner there? Well, you know, I, I really, at all intents and purposes, wanted to play uh, Scooter on on Saturday. And uh, it's just at that position, it didn't. The reason Zach got an opportunity, because KJ and Blake had those foul troubles at the four spot, and he's the one that plays the four, and Luis plays the three. And, uh, you know, we're just – they both had good, all had good attitudes. I told them yesterday, I said, guys, I, I get what you're going through. It's not easy. But the only thing I can tell you to hang your hat on is D.C. last year played in five games. He played in five games the whole year. So you just never know when, when, you're, when your number's called. You just got to be ready to go. And, but those guys' attitudes have all been really good in practice. Was it just an off couple of games for Blake, or do you feel like he's kind of forcing his shot? Uh, you know, he – I don't know if it's off. I mean, yeah, but he hadn't shot it. As well, obviously, you know, those, some of those similar shots he made at, at Mississippi State. You know, he, he hadn't made the last couple games, you know. And, and, and like you've heard me say it, I mean, Blake, you know, well, when you don't, sh you know, shoot, make four or five threes, how can you affect the game? And they did get four rebounds, which was an improvement. He's got to get better there. I think he did try to guard uh, better. So, uh, but I have no doubt about his hitting. He never loses confidence. I mean, he's kind of he, – he's got great bravado that he's going to try to to keep shooting balls, keep shooting the right shots, and he'll – I wouldn't be surprised if he has a really good game tomorrow night. With a guy like that who does play off of such confidence, what do you do to kind of make sure that confidence doesn't roll over into him just taking bad shots? Yeah, that, that's – and that can happen to young, young players. It can happen to a lot of different players, especially when you're struggling. Uh, you're trying to – TD can do that sometimes, just to try to get going. Then you start shooting bad shots. And uh, you're right, he, he's got to start shot faking, driving the ball more, shooting step-in threes. And the, the biggest thing is just in practice and during the games, I mean, talking about, you know, making shots, good shots, the ones that we've worked on every day. Going back to Dom and Bruce, it's so hard to not notice that Bruce is probably Dom's biggest fan and vice versa. Yep. Uh, what's their competition level like that, you know, allows for them to be each other's biggest fans? Yeah, that, that, that's a great tribute to both guys. I mean, I saw where Dom, you know, when Bruce had come off the floor in the second half, Dom was the happiest guy on the bench for Bruce and vice versa. And uh, they do, they battle each other every day because they're guarding each other every day. Uh, they're, we have, you know, in the last couple of weeks, started looking at maybe even putting them in the game at the same time. I know that happened last year. And my biggest concern is just on the defensive end, but there may be some, some times in the next, you know, seven or eight weeks of the season that both those guys will be on the floor. And then we've got you here, and you're not looking past Alabama, but a big opportunity on Saturday with the SEC Big 12 Challenge. What does that mean to your program in the league? Yeah, I think it's a very prideful thing in the league. And you can tell in league meetings the Big 12 SEC Challenge is something that they take very seriously. I mean, they want to win. And, uh, you know, we play an unbelievable team in Iowa State. Uh, I've known Steve for a long time. We played his teams when I was at Middle, he was at Murray State. He's got a, a, an excellent team, has a chance to win the Big 12. Uh, you know, it's an ESPN game, you know, powder blue game, you know, and hopefully that will kind of have those uniforms out for the second time. And I think we'll have a fantastic uh, uh, atmosphere here Saturday. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.